Now, folks, let's get over to my man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day as a great newsletter at Ord, O R D hyphen oracle.com. O R C L E, that's Ord hyphen oracle.com. Tim Wood, what's going on? Well, I sent you over some charts, and uh, we kind of went through them a little bit on Tuesday, but we didn't really get through them all. Uh, so I thought we'd kind of start with what we left off on Tuesday. That'd be awesome. So, 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 right, did, well, so, so did you just pull? Did you just pull the rug out from uh, the market, Tim? <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm thinking uh, we're we're doing what we're supposed to do. We we can actually cover that first. If no, no, want. no. We don't have to. But I mean, I'll tell you something. We just went down ninety eight S and P points in two hours. <laughs> Yeah, ninety eight. Yeah, we're, we're yeah, yeah. It's a it's a lot. It's a uh, lot. <laughs> we got, yeah, trend in one point. Yeah, so now we're starting to get panic. So yeah, this is what I was kind of looking for. No, so, I, I trust me. I know that's why I'm bringing it up because what had happened, you know, of course, Tim, well, you know, looking for that panic, and inside the arms, it went to one point nine three. I think. I think we're at four seven right now. Um, uh, according to uh. Well, uh Think or swim or one one point three four. Okay, cool. So uh, probably need you know Thursday's usually not the best day. Uh, a lot of times Fridays are because everybody you know goes to the exit on Friday, Friday, and the market's going to crash on Monday. So yeah, you know maybe may the signal will line up, but you know the two days not even near yet. The ten and the, the five and ten day are not near yet. So right, I don't know. But anyhow, let's, let's go to chart one first. Okay. Just stay with us, folks. One second. Okay, Tim, I have chat one. All right. This is, this is what kind of covered um, back on Tuesday. I'm thinking something in, important is close to happening here. Yes. Uh, and this no is in the, this, but, we're talking the gold market but, now, folks. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking the gold market. I'm sorry. But anyhow, the, mid the middle window of this chart is a monthly XAU gold ratio. Right. And it goes all the way back to like 1984. And I drew some red lines on that ratio, and I connected the highs going back to 19, or, uh, actually this chart goes back to 1984, but I connected the highs, uh, from current, you know, from uh, current time all the way back to 1994, and also kind of connected the lows here, but we're basically against the upper trend line going back to 1994, and we're pushing against that trend line right now. Also connected the lows, of 2016 to 2020, we're pretty much sitting on those lows right now too. So the XAU on a monthly chart is kind of boxed in yes. into a support area and a resistance area. Okay. So which way is going to bust? Well, you know, that's it. we might have to skip around here. Well, I actually, no, we can skip. We do whatever you want. I got them all set up, man. Okay, let's go, skip to chart two here real quick. Okay. Okay, this is this is uh, the weekly XAU yeah. and uh, the XAU gold ratio in the middle window, and right above that is the RSI for that ratio. And I circled in blue the times when the RSI fell below thirty, yes, and turned back above thirty. And those type of signals, which is all those blue lines across the chart, right. last about six months. So we just got a chart here, or we got a buy signal here. On the weekly XEU gold ratio, you know, in, uh, I think it was like mid March or early March, about you know, a, maybe a month ago or less, and most of those signals last, like I said, six months. And the minimum rally off these XEU gold ratios, when the RSI falls below uh, thirty and turns back up, is 0 0.07. Which then I got a trend line coming down from that dotted red trend line that goes all the way back to 1994. Okay. If we go to point oh seven, which is a minimum rally previous times going back to 2014, we'll be above that red line, dotted red line. Right. So that would imply we'll be breaking that trend line going back to 1994. So that's like a 30 year trend line. That's amazing. And so. Yeah, it's it's a huge break. It's a huge line. It really means something on a bigger scale, and, something and we, we hadn't seen in decades. And one of the things here, Tim, right, that folks should pay attention to is that we got under that 30, right? 
so that that when you have these when you're looking at this chart folks you can see tim did an amazing job they're all circled and so when you get under 30 then you have the shot to basically get much higher would that be correct right you, cool. you basically when the ratio goes down they're selling uh, they're selling the gold stocks compared to gold. Yes. And so that that's a kind of a decimation of gold stocks. Right. And that's how the markets work. You Which know, they, we have. They work yeah. off of panic. Right. And you got to find indicators that show where the panic rise. So yes. this is kind of a panic sell cycle on the gold stocks. Right. When that ratio goes through the floor. Right. So, uh, so you know, gold stocks over the last... 2021. Oh, yeah. In general, this ratio has been going down since 2021. And, you know, most gold stocks, yeah, at best went sideways. You yeah, know, most exactly. of them went down according yeah. to this ratio. No, there's no so, doubt they've been a mess. Yeah. But yeah, it's been a yeah. mess. So it's, it's all like you know, everybody hates it. It's, it's, a, it's an old man sport, you know. Uh, yeah. Bitcoin's, Bitcoin's where it's where at. where to be, you yeah. know, all this other right. stuff. Right. You know, I. I think that's all going to change here. But, well, but, you, you know, know it, it's so intriguing that you, we're talking about this because there's no doubt, well, we go back six months ago, I mean, the bottom line is that, you know, the, the market is saying, hey, you know, maybe Bitcoin's the new gold, that people have invested in Bitcoin, that, you know, saying screw gold. Um, and, that's yeah. what it's, and that's what it seemed like, right? I mean, I, I can tell you, you know, even I was kind of analyzing it myself and I'm saying to myself, okay, just as you said, is this the old guy's deal? And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, would that be right? And then I, then I just start thinking, I says, but you know what? Every time, not every time, any time that I want, I can walk down to anywhere and give an ounce of gold and they're going to give me 2300 bucks in my pocket. That's right. So I was like, That's okay, right. man. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. Well, welcome back, folks. Tim Oyd, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials trading down 485. NASDAQ's off 185. S&Ps are off 61. And that's a downdraft in the S&Ps, folks, of 105 S&P points. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Wood, and right now we are talking the gold market. We're also going to talk the S&Ps before we're done, but uh, bottom line, right. right now we're talking gold. Yeah, so this trend right. line, it, it, Tim, is going to be a huge deal, man. Yeah, it is. Actually, let's go back to chart one again. Okay. Uh, this is, you know, uh, this is just a line chart. It's not as messy as uh, like a counsel chart. Yes. But, you know, you know the, the wise cop stuff, you know, was popular for a while. And really, to get through a trend line, you need a sign of strength. Yes. And on that chart, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to break that trend line, you're going to have to see a sign of strength. And if you notice, that trading range over the last, uh, you know, six months, a year, has been extremely tight. It has. You know, I circled in red there. Yep. So normally, you get tight moves, you get expansion. You get expansion, you get back to tight moves. The market kind of just breathes in and out, I yes. guess you might say. So I'm thinking you're going to see a spike on the XAU gold ratio, probably through that line, and uh, probably sooner than later. So I don't know. I don't know when it's going to happen. But so far, we're not through it. That line is around 0 0.06. Okay. And we're and we're 0 0.058. Oh, uh, interesting. Of, okay. So, and when Tim's well, yeah. talking about a sign of strength, folks, that's going to be wide price spread, accelerated volume. You get a really you when you look at a chart. You're going to say, wow, that's a big move. If, if you have to think about, is that a big move or not, that's not a sign of strength. Signs of strength you can see from a mile away, after they take place, of course. Yeah, Yeah. so I'm thinking that's what's going to happen. So uh, you, you see some of these coal stocks start to pop. I don't know what's, you know, how you know, this is all monthly charts. It doesn't mean this is going to happen today or tomorrow or even next week, you know, but I'm, I'm thinking... Uh, I don't know. I mean, probably in the next couple of months, I would think. Well, so, we've certainly I mean, got we've certainly got Tim plenty of gold equities that have shown huge strength in the past two weeks. I mean, the yeah. volumes exploded yeah, right. topside, the prices exploded topside, and that it would make sense because the lows that were established inside the gold equities, you know, were. I mean, devastating lows, man. There's no doubt about it. You know, gold yeah. gold kept moving, and yet the gold equities did not move. And now, what just happened yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before, you actually had silver moving. You know, so yeah. silver was lagging, and then all of a sudden, you know, we know that silver 
is highly volatile, a lot more volatile than gold, and all of a sudden, you know, silver has two days of monster moves, and um, the volume is still there. I mean, we did 130,000 contracts yesterday in the silver market, and that's a market that normally does about 30 or 35,000, folks, and we're doing 90,000 today. So, you know, little by little, yeah. you're getting buyers in here. Um, and the cool thing, Tim, is that, um, you know, I was listening to, uh, when I was coming into work this morning, and... Uh, mm -hmm. One of the analysts on there, her name's Gina. I think it's Gina. No, it's Abigail. Abigail Doolittle. Um, and and she's, she's a great analyst. I mean, uh, she's a technical analyst. But you know what she said, which is just music to our ears? She said, man, she says, you know, this gold move, she says, I haven't been paying attention to it. But man, that thing just took off and broke out. And now that was the first time that you actually hear something like that, well, that I heard something like that, let's put it that way. And that was cool, man, because, you know, we know that gold's been moving for a long period of time right now, you know, and, yeah. you know, people are just starting to pay attention to it, which that's what you need, folks, for a bull market. You need non-believers. Non-believers are totally where it's at. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah. So, oh. anyhow, uh, Go, uh, go to the chart two again. Look at the bottom window there. Okay. And uh, it's the weekly XAU, and I drew that uh, line across there. And uh, this chart's current today, you know, I did a couple hours yes. ago or whatever. And it looks like a head and shoulders bottom, and we're breaking it through that neckline. Right. That neckline can be off a little bit, depends how you draw it. But, you know, it's in this vicinity. And it looks like we're passing through it right now on the XAU. Golds are actually, in my opinion, has already broke out. Yes. And the gold stocks are just starting now to perform. So uh, uh, I'm thinking this performance is still early in the stage. I think we still got time. Because I don't think this rally is going to be over anytime soon. I think the, I, I think on a bigger time frame, we're going to see something really, really big. Actually, let's, let's start to look at the bigger trend. Okay. Uh, it's just, it's, uh, let's, go to, yeah, let's go to chart four. Okay. Yeah, no, listen, yeah, man, I Tim, I, I, I agree with you, man. What has happened, folks, some of these gold stocks, let's say if a stock's trading at 7, well, the high itself is probably 24, 25, but that's only saying that the last high that was established in 2011, and that's when gold was like 1,900 versus the 2,300 we have right now. So, yeah, I can, I can see this difference. And I have chart number four up now, Tim. All right. Uh, this is this is a weekly chart, and this is uh, any, anyhow the bottom window is the advanced decline uh, with the Bollinger Band on it. The next one up is the up down volume. Uh, both of them are for GDX, and anyhow, in, in a nutshell, you don't catch the bottom. What I designed this chart to do is catch the trend. Yes. How long can you stay on the, this? So. Anyhow, when both of them are above the mid Bollinger Band, which they are, and they were are started last week, so it didn't catch the low. But a lot of times, when you get above the mid-Bollinger Band, it stays above the mid-Bollinger Band. Mm -hmm. Now, it didn't happen in the October, November, December. It went up, went down, went up, went back right. down, with, with you back and forth. And the weekly charts are a little bit uh, finicky that way. But at least on the weekly, we're back on a moment. This is a momentum chart, so it measures the momentum of the advanced clients and up-down volume. So okay. So it really... It, it catches. It's meant to design to catch the trend. Uh, so, um, if you look back in uh, 2022, you know uh, it gave up a, a sell signal back in looks like about April May, April time frame. Stayed on a sell signal all the way in October. Yes. And then it gave a buy signal that lasted uh, two three months, and it then went kind of garbage buy sell buy sell. Then it gave a sell signal. And it looks like about April of last year, and it kept on a sell signal until October. Uh, then it got mushy again. Now it's back on a buy signal. So it's it's not, on a weekly time, it's not ideal. So let's flip to chart four. Okay. Or chart, chart five, rather. Chart five. Okay, I have it. Yeah, okay, this is the one that really catches the trend. And again, it's not designed to catch the bottom. Okay. It's designed to catch the trend. And actually, we got a break coming here. Yep. So, stay, right, stay right there. Tim and I are going to be coming right back, folks. Uh, and uh, we get a call on the line, Tim. We'll take that call when we're coming back, too. This is uh, Tim Oy, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 558. Nasdaq's off 206. S&P's are down 70. And uh, Tim uh, or Tom O'Brien, we are going to go to our man, Jose, in Lakeland. Jose has a question for us, Tim. Jose, what's going on, brother? Yeah, hi, Tom. Hi, Tim. Great show, fellas. Uh, Thank you. Hey, um, I'm just Thank curious. You. Uh, yep, uh, Fed Governor Cash and Carry, is it? Cash and Carry? Yes. I'm just curious if the SEC is as curious as I am. Uh, does this guy make a phone call to family members and say, hey, honey, buy a uh, buy hundred puts. So I'm going to make a statement in five minutes. It's going to flip <laughs> this market around. I mean, do they even care? I'm just amazed at these Fed governors. I mean, I have a question for you. Isn't Jerome Powell's decision the final say on whether how many cuts comes or how much input do these Fed governors actually have? Because I'm real cynical about, uh, you know, Fed governor cash and carry. So, what, what, and folks, and Tim, what, what, um, uh, we're talking about here is this is that it was cash carry, okay? who came out, and cash carry is normally a um, dove. Dove. <laughs> Excuse me. And he came out, and he said specifically that he thought that it may be possible that there's no rate cuts for 2024. And that's when you saw the S&Ps, well, right now, the S&Ps from the highs to the lows are down over 115 points. Um, yeah, so what, what does happen, Jose, is that it's a consensus. It's not just Powell. It is a consensus. But what Powell tries to do, of course, is that talk to the Fed governors individually and collectively and come to a conclusion. You know, my, my, my take on this, you know, is I think we're going to get at least a couple rate cuts anyway. You know, we'll, we'll see yeah, where it yeah. shakes out. Um, yeah. You know, but there's well, no doubt. Well, I mean... That was quite a statement that he made, particularly, and the way, the, the reason the market's paying such attention to it, folks, is because he is a dove, you know, but guess what? Okay, so, so you have Friday jobs number, it'll be more than 200,000 jobs created, you'll be down another 2%, 2.5% tomorrow, bottom line is, look at Microsoft, down a dollar thirty or something, right. you know, they're going to give the, they're going to give the benefit of the doubt to tech stocks, you got earnings coming out in two weeks, so... Blah 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 to their flip around the market. Uh, yeah, I I agree with you, and and I think Tim does too. The bottom line, Tim's been looking for fear to come in the marketplace. We finally have it. Um, you know, if we get a couple days of it, it's great. You know, inside the Tigers, then uh, you know Z's bringing up the point, and it's so true that you know, and Tim had brought this up actually uh, last time you were on with, is that we're coming into a new moon and we're coming into the eclipse. Yeah. On the yeah. 8th, yeah. Uh, so th Monday. this could Monday. really work out really good to, you know, get us a nice, um, you know, entry into the marketplace, man. So, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know if Basil's on the tennis court right now, but if he's listening, he made a nice call a few days ago. He said he's taking off long positions right now. So Yes, yes, no nice. doubt. Very nice. Okay, listen, man, we appreciate it, Jose. You have a great one, a safe one. Okay, thank Thanks you. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh, Tim? I know. Yeah, pretty cool. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fundamentalist, so I, I, I don't really keep track of that stuff. But, anyhow, uh, it, 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 you know, news is affected by the market, so the market yes. is affected. But, anyhow, let's get back to uh, technical analysis here. Yep. And uh, I have. So, anyhow, chart. So, actually, flipped, chart four was the weekly up down volume advanced decline indicators which right now both of them are above the mid bollinger bands so on the weekly time frame it's on a buy signal okay the one you really want to, to flip to a buy signal which doesn't catch the bottoms but does catch the trend and it's been on a sell signal you know we sold this chart before yes. back in 2021 and it's been basically in a downtrend ever since so, and I got the middle chart there, which is the GDX, uh, monthly GDX, and I got a point there that says well, you need a sign of strength through that trend line. Yes, I see so it. To me, this looks like a, yeah, it looks like a head and shoulders bottom. And what I've been saying kind of over the last week or two, is says market's probably going to get stronger. Only reason why, you're up against these trend lines all over the place. I know. And to get through a trend line, you need a sign of strength. Well, that means the market's going to get stronger. And, so I'm, I'm 
And it has. The, the gold market has got stronger. You know, in the context, folks, that you've had more price spread. And the volume has got explosive, man. I mean, on every one yeah. of these equities. You know, so that's happening, man. The momentum's right. getting heavier, which is really cool. Yeah. Right. So, so anyhow, both those charts, the, the, the monthly uh, top one, which is the cumulative up, down volume, and the bottom one chart, advanced decline, if both those to get up right now, both of them, the bottom one's right at that trend line, if not on it, and the top one is a little bit short yet. But once they get above those trend lines, it usually doesn't whip like back and forth like the weeklies or dailies do. Once they get in the trend, they stay in the trend. I see. And most of those signals, yeah, most of the signals, you know, the last signal was back to 2021. So that's been a three-year signal. Wow. One before that looks like about a year and a half. The one before that looks like about a year and a half. And, uh, you know, so I'm saying once this gets above the mid-Bollinger Band, you're looking probably at a minimum a year and a half of rally. So a lot, a lot of upward, not every month is going to be an up month, but the trend probably over the next, my, I'm thinking at least a year and a half, is going to be up. So but we need to get up. We need to get above the, the mid Bollinger Band. So I think the bottom was in back in October of, or uh, August of 2022. Um, if you flip back to, uh, I'm switching around here a little bit. No, that's no, good. But but uh, if we go back to chart three, okay. This is a momentum chart. Momentum actually works extremely well. It does. But, you know, the, uh, the bottom window is the sl monthly slow stochastics of the XAU, and this chart goes all the way back to 1985, and shows all the buy signals. And this thing gave a buy signal back in August 2022. That was probably the head of a head and shoulders bottom. Then we went up for a couple, three months, four months, whatever, and we kind of went sideways for the last couple of years, creating a right shoulder. And so now we're gonna break through the, the neckline, and uh, probably, the uh, slow stochastics will get back above the plus 80 area, which in the previous times when it got back above plus 80, it was a, a multi-month, if not a multi-year decline. So, But we're early in the stages here, so I think the most bread or the most better going to be on the bread is probably in the next year and a half. And you so know, folks, we're early, in my opinion, we're early in this this uh, bull market. No, listen, man, I, I, I agree with you. And you know what I just realized, Tim, when you're going through these shots, I wish well, I, I, I'm going to actually hunt out on the Internet and see if these interviews are there because they might be. Um, when Tim and I, folks, were on and I'm going all the way back now into the 90s. OK. And when gold was basically well uh, it was 25250 that we caught on to it i bought it at 28250 um and i remember you specifically tim because what was going on then is that the 20 year bear market it had been going sideways right at at lows right and i remember you specifically saying that when this line breaks forget it and of course the line broke and the key here, folks, is to understand, as Tim's going through this with us, set it up. Set your stocks up, man, because the bottom line, if it breaks, you are really off to the races. Stay right there. Tim and I are coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us. We are, what ch uh, number child would you like, Tim? All right, so uh, yeah, we can flip to uh, the actually the last chart. We don't have a lot of time. Okay. And I, I, this is that um, the middle or the top window is the RSI for the the ratio right below, which is the SPX tilt ratio. Yes. And I printed this chart 1240, uh, I think 12, 1246 looks like uh, today, your time. Yes. And I, what I wanted to point out is I got uh, circled up there in the left-hand corner is 70.35. And uh, every time, this is just a short-term chart. Okay. Uh, so it just, it doesn't, it picks out maybe multi-day uh, declines, but not multi-week or anything. You'll maybe get three, four, five-day decline, whatever. And uh, over the last couple of days, you only got like two, three-day decline. But today, at uh, 
1246 uh, Eastern Time, RSI for this ratio was uh, 70.35, and that was pretty much the high for the day. So every time this ratio gets RSI gets above plus 70, you're at a short-term high. My point is that picked the high today. Wow. So okay. That's the, reason, that's the reason why I pointed it out. Yep. So you get above plus 70, you know, maybe it might go to 71, but you're in the ballpark of, of where the high is. So cool. right, right now it's all the way back down to 50, 51 or so. So, you know, I thought that was kind of cool. No, that that's is cool. That's why I really don't panic with the market's rally. And if this ratio is anywhere near 70, normally you're closer to a high than a low. Okay. So. Uh, if it gets down to below minus 30, which I don't know if oil or not, it's usually a bottom. And that's those red trend lines. So, uh, anyhow. And so, uh, hey, listen. Not, I mean, the bottom line is that if we look at this S&P, we just might be on the way to that gap. Down the spy. Yep. yep, we might take a shot at it. Gotta love it. Tim Oyd, right. it's always a pleasure, man. You have a great weekend, a safe weekend. We look forward to speaking to you on Tuesday. All right, sounds good. Take care, man. Right. Folks, have All a right. great night, a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 a.m. Great show, folks. Yeah, look at him, folks. <laughs>